How's it going Facebook? Here with you with another Audi video. Now today I'm going to be covering uh, the two-piece drive shaft. Now this one is particular for the all-road but the same principle is going to apply for the the B5, uh, the A4s, the, the A6, the R6, anything that has uh, the, that generation of the C5 or the, the B5 or any of those that has a two-piece drive shaft with the center support that has the uh, the rubber bushing on it. Now we're going to go over how to basically identify it. Now there's a lot of things that can go wrong with it. You can have either one of the, uh, the slip joints on either end or the the universal joint. And the bad part about these is the universal joint isn't rebuildable. Uh, you can remove it and put a, a spicer joint into it that's greasable and a lot of times you can go on the 034 Motorsports and you can replace the uh, the support for it, the center support, because what happens is the rubber likes, usually the, the center bearing that is impregnated in the rubber doesn't go bad, but the rubber itself likes to get old and it, it, it basically allows the drive shaft to, to float around. Now the symptoms of this normally is at first, it starts off with um, you start having vibration under acceleration or vibration at certain highway speeds. And it's only when you accelerate or at certain coasting speeds. It's kind of a weird one. So I, I've already rebuilt my entire front suspension. My back suspension's fine. I have coilovers in my car, new sway bars, inner and outer tie rods. I check my steering rack my transmission mounts, my motor mounts, my engine's not misfiring, I mean, I checked everything in my car, and I'm just like, okay, what the hell's going on, so I went on to the Audi forums, I talked to the guys in the Audi C5 group on, on Facebook, and they're like, dude, check your drive shaft, so I did, and I went through, and I'm going to show here in the video, where it shows that basically the drive shaft, you know, it goes to, if you have the rear, rear of the car, the front of the car, and they meet in the middle, you have that rubber support and allows it to kind of flex back and forth like this and if that rubber gets worn out when it's spinning it allows it to wobble which allows vibration to go to the rear of the car and the front of the car so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how to easily diagnose it and in this video it, it, there's plenty of videos out there already on how to repair that center shaft support with the 034 Motorsports or even one of the inexpensive aftermarket ones. Uh, I was been told that if you're going to replace it, go with the 034 Motorsports because it has a higher density rubber. They actually use a polyurethane one that works a lot better. It's going to last longer. I'm going to show you how to do it the, the ghetto way, honestly. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be doing a six-speed swap soon and I just need this to last until I do that. Um, that and my, I have 165,000 miles in my car. Um, I really, I found a unit out of Arizona with half as many miles and I wasn't 100% sure about pulling my drive shaft, the exact condition of it. So I figured, okay, I found this drive shaft shipped for 140 bucks. Um, you know, and I wasn't sure because I, mine kind of got to the bad side where it started getting really bad vibration throughout my steering wheel in the center of the car and the back of the car. And I didn't know if the U-joint went bad and how expensive it might be. So versus pulling it and then having to spend a bunch of money rebuilding it or what could be, I just bought a whole new one in better shape. It's been tested and I'm going to, uh, reinforce it. Now the reinforcement I'm going to do is also going to be a good way to, repair yours if it's in the, the, the lower stages of the, uh, the the center support going bad. So I'm going to get into that now. So pay attention to the video for diagnostic and how to repair. Let's start by safely jacking your car up to a height where you can comfortably work underneath.
All right, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna find your center support. Easy. You look for the cross member brace for it. It's gonna be above your exhaust. Mine is aftermarket, as you can tell. And sorry, it's a little shaky. You can see it's up there where it has the support that goes across. Kind of looks like a drive shaft loop. Now what you're gonna do, you're gonna take a pry bar and get in there. Yeah. Get underneath it. I'm trying to get a good angle for you. Let me try to bend this down just a hair. One moment. Trying to get it where you guys can see. I don't know if you can tell, but that drive shaft with very minimal play in the pry bar, I'm barely pushing, is moving quite a bit. So that means that that rubber is deteriorated and it's causing it to move around too much because that should be rather stiff. Let me do it again. Yeah, see how much that drive shaft moves around? That means when I'm accelerating, that drive shaft is flopping around in there, causing vibrations. Now, even though that rubber bushing isn't ripped, it's weakened up enough, allowing it to cause the drive shaft to just do that slightly, causing vibration. So that means that center support is no bueno. Okay, now that you get your drive shaft down, you have your heat plates here. They have a bunch of these little fake nuts on here, if you can see. They're 11 mils, so go ahead and take all these down and remove the heat shields all the way down the length of the car until you can access the next part is going to be the uh, drive shaft, uh, the front transmission drive shaft heat shield up front. All right, next up we got the heat shield that goes underneath the front. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Sorry, my hands are shaky. See that little guy right there? That is a T45. And there should be two of them, one on the other side that takes down that heat shield right there. So you're going to need a couple extensions to get past it because your exhaust is still going to be in the way. You don't want to take down your whole front exhaust. It's just a pain. So TT, blah, 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 blah. two T45 uh, bolts to get that guy out. Okay, now that we have the center shaft... Uh, more visible I'm going to show you what it looks like watch this wiggle 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 yeah like a fat chick's butt in a rap video so that's bad now you have noticed there's also oil around here I'm suspecting this is probably hydraulic filled and the hydraulic fluid blew out because um, you know the Germans love the hydraulic filled bushings so that's probably why this went bad the U-joint doesn't look bad. I don't see any grease or anything bad, but like I said, I'd, I'd rather be safe than sorry, so I'm replacing this anyways. <coughs> but if that one goes bad, I got a backup. Or if I want to, I can use this for parts to convert to my one piece. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this down anyways. But like I said, when you get this apart and you see how much play is there, you know, when this thing is traveling at X thousand RPM, that little bit of vibration like that can cause it to go back to your rear diff and your transmission, and that can uh, that can cause quite a bit of annoyance on your car. Okay, now that we got it down, let's take a better look. Now, to get it out, there were Allen bolts on both ends, there were uh, six of them that were H6 or 6 millimeter that they were pretty snug. I actually broke one of my cheaper tools trying to get them off. I had to go to my more pricey ones. But uh, what I did 
is I did the accessible ones while it was in park and e-brake on um, and then spun it 180 degrees and then just did the other ones then they actually held in pretty well now be careful because there is grease on the back of them for the uh, the the bearings inside here so be cautious of that and then once I get it done I ended these two which were uh, I used a 14 I think it was actually a 13 but a 14 took it off and then I just popped them out now now that we have this down you can see how how much flex and deterioration and you can see the actual rips and tears inside that rubber all along so yeah this is uh definitely what was causing my uh my vibrations along my car so we're gonna get the new one in my ups truck should be here anytime now and then we can get on to what would be the repair if people want to fix them i think this one might be in uh the more deteriorated state you if you want to fix one this bad, as long as it's not completely torn through, I think you'll be good. But we'll get to showing on how to fix them when they're not completely destroyed or how to reinforce in my case. So we'll get to that once the UPS truck gets here. Okay, UPS finally showed up. Oh man, took forever. But I got the new drive shaft. It's uh, physically seems a little bit better condition. Bearing spins fine. Now it still has a little bit of the wiggle wiggle, which you're going to have, but when I press on it, you can see it doesn't deflect quite as much. It is, does have the little, if it focuses, oh, let me zoom out a little bit, zoom in maybe, a little bit of the cracking still, but not too bad, but that's why I'm going to reinforce it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush and some uh, uh, brake cleaner and everything and I'm going to clean this off then I'm going to tape up around here in the sides and I am going to be using the most dense stuff they have out there is pretty good uh, you can use um, actual polyurethane if you want to two-part mix this is easy window weld I get this at O'Reilly's it does the job but I'm going to use that because it's one part it works really well it uh, it hardens up nicely and it'll do the job so like I said I'm going to clean this up get all the dirt out get everything out of here and try to uh, rough up the rubber just a bit so that way it sticks a little bit better okay went ahead and I taped off around the bearing now when you tape it off don't just tape up to the bearing, tape a little bit down on the bearing because you don't want the stuff getting in there. And then I, as you can tell, went all the way around and made it flush. Now when you put it down there, go down into it because it's kind of concave and fill in on both sides of it and then smooth it out. So you got to press it all the way in, then go all the way around. Now you do one side at a time and after you do it, you want to let the bearing to be able to sit where it's at now I'm gonna let it sit for about an hour to start setting up then I'm gonna flip it and do the other side but you don't want to press on the bearing anyway you want it to sit in its natural state you know where there's no left right up down anything right now I just got sitting in a four uh, or a vice just with enough pressure to hold it and I said in about an hour I'm gonna flip it around and then put the top part in a vice and do the other side then I'm going to let it sit for another couple hours, let everything seal up. Then I can pull the tape off. When I pull the tape off, there will be an area around the bearing where it will be free. And if I need to, I can take a razor blade and I can cut just a slight little tiny uh, bevel in there if it got too close. Same thing with the other side. But uh, got that in right now, so I'm going to do is let this sit for an hour, come back, and we'll do the other side. Okay, been an hour. I went ahead and flipped it. It was uh, firm, not, not set, but firm enough where I can move it. On this side, as you can tell, there's a natural lip up there. So what I did is I just filled it and I made sure not to go over that lip. Did the same thing. Cleaned it real good with brake cleaner. Got all the dust out. I roughed it up a little bit with a wire brush. 
Uh, so I gave something to bite on to make sure all the dust and everything was out. And then filled it all the way up and I made sure to uh, fill down into the crevices first. And then filled it up to just shy of that lip but didn't go over it. Went all the way around and of course I took off the rust and put some black paint on it. Now it's going to need, from what I can read online, a hard cure is going to be about two days. So what I'm going to let it do is I'm going to let it set overnight. I'm going to let it set overnight before I install it. Then I'm going to let it sit for another day before I drive it. Uh, that way I'm going to give this plenty of time to cure. Now that's for guys who are doing bushings where it's considerably thicker, but better safe than sorry. So overnight to be able to move, I would say two days before you, you drive it. Um, that's just me being safe. If you guys want to do it sooner, that's really your call. But when it comes to installing, it's really the reverse. Put it up. Um, now, when you, when you put these in, as you can tell, there's a little back and forth. So when you put it in, it allows the drive shaft to move left and right. Go ahead and put the end caps on first. And then kind of let it naturally sit into place. And then look along the plane of it and make sure it's not cantered. Make sure it's as straight as possible. Start the, uh, the two uh, bolts. Get it where it's not quite snug, just shy of it, where you can still move it. And then get it right in the place where it's nice and straight and sits kind of naturally. And then tighten those two bolts up. Then go ahead and put the heat shields back on and your exhaust back into place. And snug everything down. I don't have the, the torque specs on me. Um, I would say, uh, as we say in Germany, it's going to be gut and tight. But uh, I'm going to put a dab, just a tiny, tiny dab of blue Loctite on the flange bolts. Just because I don't want them coming loose. That's, uh, that's some negatory. And a dab of blue Loctite uh, on the threads coming out here onto the bolt. Just because I don't want this thing going anywhere. Not a lot. I like blue Loctite. Not red Loctite. So be a bitch to take down if you ever need to. Um, green Loctite's fine as well. Just enough to keep them from vibrating free. Which hopefully this, <laughs> this fixes that. But seeing the fact that this is going to be a lot more stiff now. There's going to be more availability for any vibration to transfer to this bracket. So a tab of blue or green Loctite on the bolts. And then give them a good tight. I would say I have to look up the uh, the specs, but it's probably going to be somewhere in the the 20 to 25 foot pound range. I'm going to try to find that and add it to the comment section. I'm going to try to find the specs for uh, the flange bolts as well. Put those in the comment section so I don't have them offhand. But as usual, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comment section.